part two of module one, understanding the matrix. And now we're going to get into how they control the narrative. How do they do it? In part one of this understanding the matrix, we talked about the secret government and all the things behind the curtain that creates this structure or hierarchical system that creates the manipulation and control over humanity. In this video, we're going to talk about the specifics parts of the structure, or at least the most important ones and predominant that actually control the narrative of what we humans keep buying into it. So there are different categories and we're going to go through them. We got to start with politics, which is how they rule and dictate their will. Okay. So this is how they obviously, like we said in the past video, they interact and they create this interface between us, the people and them behind the curtain. So the politics are really the monitor the screen by which we interact with them and they interact with us to make us do the things that they want. How they do this, of course, is through the idea that we buy into uh, the concept that we need a government, that we need people to represent us because we cannot do this alone. Now, this idea has been coming from a long time, especially since royalty. There's always been a sort of government over people that dictates what needs to be done. And this has always been in a hierarchical system. No positive environment creates hierarchical systems. Yes, of course, we have been living for thousands of years in hierarchical systems, but that doesn't mean that that is the only way to live as humans. Uh, there's always an enticement into what it is to live in a specific culture or a society or a village or a town or a city because they provide something that is appealing to people. And this is how they grab us. Once they grab us and they uh, they attract the population to all these uh, marvelous things that they offer, then they need to rule over us. And that rule, that, um, that sort of law that exists is how they control us and we keep voting for it. So politics is basically the way the secret government does their bidding um, uh, and creates the control system as it is to uh, rule and uh, manipulate people into doing or not doing certain things. Uh, this also has to do with the financial system and how they create things for us to have a perpetual scarcity. And this can go on and on. I'm sure you have your own ideas of how this works and you have your own information about it. So I'm not going to keep getting into this. Second part is the education. Education system is how they entrain people because not only do they not want people who can think freely, but they also want people who can act on the things that they want. And that's why the education system has been infiltrated for a long time and has been creating uh, basically robots or what I called uh, cog wheels in this machinery that we call the control system. So the education system is just to strip away any sort of liberties and freedom of thinking of any children so they can have their own agenda being furthered by the people. They also uh, create numerous uh, mind control um, uh, systems by which they actually make kids and children behave in certain ways, respecting authority and having this self uh, uh, worth being diminished and reduced to nothing. You are probably familiar with this because in your growing um, system, whatever it was, wherever you are located, you're probably familiar with how this made you feel uh, worthless in some ways or superior to others in another. So there is no middle ground. There is no actual education on human uh, behavior, but rather just a hierarchical system of points and you get punished and so on. That creates obviously people who are subservient to the system because they always want to achieve something. They always want to get to somewhere. And of course, the system is created for them to grab onto this uh, idea or this, um, this, this thirst for, for power that is created in the education system. This, of course, prolongs all the way to college and universities and doctorates and so on, because that's how they keep creating people who are subservient to their system. 
We can go deeper into this, but that's not the purpose of this video. Next is that we have religion. Religion, aside from the education, aside from the voting system or control that we have on politics and so on, laws and rules and whatnot, religion now deals with the control of our sense of spirituality, who we think we are. Religion has been uh, controlled over thousands of years, and we can go back to Josiah uh, burning down and breaking the uh, Solomon's temple uh, 2,500 years ago or so, all the way up to the, um, the Catholic Church and the Vatican City per se to create these control systems. Of course, this has to do with the nature of humans. We always wonder, who are we? We're always looking to the stars, to nature, to other people, to little details that makes us wonder philosophically who we are. Well, religion has come and control that by creating, of course, hierarchical systems. Once again, there is the sense of punishment, cells of worthlessness, and other types of behaviors that are indoctrinated into people to believe that they are worthless. Once again, this is just the work of the same people, all the ones that we talked about in uh, part one, where we talk about the secret government and the actual negative entities that are providing this sort of philosophy, this negative philosophy of power over others. So religion, again, has been controlled in a way to suppress our spirituality. It is to keep us unaware of our true spirit. And we're going to get into this in uh, further modules two and three and explain all these things, who we are specifically. So don't despair. There's a lot of light uh, at the end of the tunnel of this first module, which is understanding the matrix. So that's the purpose of religion. That's what they have been doing for thousands of years. And that's what they still try to do right now, despite the great awareness that is uh, coming out in the population of humanity, as always. Next, we have science. Science is a new tool that they have developed actually or infiltrated over the past three centuries, 300 years or so, where we started studying in a more observational way the, uh, the matters of nature and the way the physical world acts. Great scientists have discovered marvelous things that teaches that there is a consciousness in the universe and there are things that cannot be explained by the church in this case and they have adapted to that uh, politics of course have manipulated science to suppress technology so science has always been uh, the tool that we have used to understand better this universe that has been uh, hidden from us but again it was distorted probably 200 years ago with the Darwinian model where they created this evolution out of nothing and of course spirituality was stripped away from science and it created just this body of senseless and no um, no essence uh, basically uh, system where we are just told that we are simple matter that was animated and so on. We don't have to get into the depths of this even though it's very very interesting and compelling to keep researching but that's that science is now how uh, it's how they distract us from the true nature of the universe is what I have and this is just the the simple truth science has been the uh, the hidden way or the way they hide all the things from us that have been especially technology as it is we're gonna get into technology in a little bit and now history is also the way they have written our past hiding our ancestry History has been suppressed. A lot of archaeological discoveries have been suppressed from the mainstream and for the people and the public to analyze, and that has been created again. They all go under the umbrella of conspiracy theories or tinfoil hats. Uh, history has also uh, been used to conceal all the things that are uh, anomalies within our own planet. All the, uh, the discoveries that we've had in ancient civilizations and in uh, dozens or thousands of years, say 12,000, 20,000, 50,000, even millions of years of old material that we have discovered that it's not congruent with the model that we have. And at the surface level, what this means is that they, they don't want the mainstream um, narrative of science being challenged 
because if we find any sort of technology that is not coherent with say our idea of hunter gatherers 20,000 years ago that will definitely challenge everything that they have done great uh, example of this are uh, is the sphinx in egypt of course which has been dated actually hasn't been eight, uh, dated it has been dated at least 12,000 years old but some people actually make it seem older 20 50 or even millions of years old because of all the anomalies that are around it but that information has been suppressed and it seems like nowadays science is there not to discover new things but just to suppress all the new discoveries and to argue against them and to further their own model so again history is just another facet of how this has been controlled over time we get into technology now which is a double-edged sword kind of thing because they meaning the uh the negative entities and those in control the secret societies uh what they call the illuminati in some um in, in some groups it could be the cabal for others just the people behind the secret government the humans behind the secret government they needed to control us even more however it's a double-edged sword because as you can see we can use it for information and to spread out uh, just information that is relevant for us to wake up to become aware of the reality that is behind this thick veil that is being uh, being broken down or revealed over time uh, recently so we can create our own ideas of what this reality is so technology again is something that they keep manipulating they keep suppressing because obviously free energy when it was discovered 100 years ago by tesla was denied to the public because it would destroy the oil uh, industry and it would destroy financial systems back then so the rest of the population suffered from the um the suppression of this free energy over 100 years ago like we said and they have kept it for themselves just for their own benefits and to maintain this agenda that they have. Lastly, we have media. Media is the best way of um, suppressing everything that's been going on out there. It's the best way to discredit anything because we are so addi addicted, like I said, in education, respect of authority. So they always portray and use people who they claim to be the maximum authority in technology, in religion, in science, in education, in uh, scholarship, anything. So they use it to discredit other people who have been coming out with information that just simply makes sense. So the media is there to also further, of course, the government. <laughs> 2020 has been a very good example of how media can be used just to uh, further false flags like we have seen this year many of them and in the past as well so media is just there to control the narrative in the way of information and that's why right now we're in the midst of what they called uh, information war because it's all about giving misinformation disinformation and creating even more confusion as to what it is that we need to believe in or what it is the authority that we need to follow or anything like that the truth is that we don't need to follow anybody we just need to follow our own heart and what it actually means you know for us all the information that uh, we are being presented everything that i have said for the past 13 minutes could be garbage to you and that's fine that's actually uh, uh beneficial for you and beneficial for the rest of humanity we don't need to follow anybody just follow our own things in our own heart in this regard so that's all i got for how they control the narrative like i said every one of these points can go into a deeper and deeper rabbit hole with a lot of history and a lot of ideas of people who are way smarter than me that know much about this but this is just in a nutshell, what it is to control the narrative. Like I said before, sometimes being presented this information can be overwhelmed and it can challenge your convictions. So it makes you feel fearful and in distress, makes you feel hopeless, but that's not the case. This type of information actually liberates you, gives you the freedom to understand and find your own reality. So by doing this, you're actually on the right path. I'll see you in the next video.